Welcome back to the Corby Pole Fair 2002, where we're at West Glebe Park. Earlier on in the day, we saw many of the pupils of Stanion Preschool Nursery taking part in the pageant. But how did they become involved in this historic reenactment? Well, we've actually, two weeks ago, had um, a week in Great uh, Britain and um, all the children, the costumes were made specially for that. We had the mayor ca um, came and we um, had the stocks at the preschool and uh, we, we served them pie, mash and liquor, which is a traditional London dish, you know, because I drew the line at eels. There's no way I was going to have eels there. <laughs> um, and then, because the pole fair was on and it's 20 years, you know, before the next one, we decided... Um, um, to ask them if we could join in the children in their costumes and they said yes great so what were the children doing at Rowlett school this morning just really being pretty just sort of uh, you know an um, added attraction because um, the, the, the charter was read some of the charter was read I believe and um, it was just really just to you know um, for them to be involved a little bit more than just the parade. So can you tell me a bit about the costumes that the children are wearing? Uh, yes, the mums have been brilliant. They really have. They've gone on the internet, they've, they've done everything they possibly can, gone to the library, and they are just about as they would have been, you know, all those years ago in Tudor and uh, Henry VIII and, and um, Victorian times, you know. So um, they, it was wonderful, and, and they were made by family and friends, and uh, I can't believe it, you know, it's done me so proud, really. So how important do you think the Corby Pole Fair is to the people of Corby? Well, this is my first one, actually, um, and I moved to Stanion just um, 20 years ago, and um, so we didn't get to that one, but oh, it's very, yeah, it's a pity it's 20 years. I think it ought to be, you know, sort of every year. It would be nice to get together and have some fun, you know, so it is very important. And I don't know if enough people realise that, you know. And it seems that everyone's having a great time at the Corby Pole Fair. We were attracted by a large crowd around the entertainments arena, eagerly cheering these very authentic knights of King Edward III, mounted on their splendidly adorned steeds as they performed the jousting tournament. In addition to the actual jousting, there were several warm-up acts, like retrieving a small ring on the end of your lance at galloping speed on horseback. But would you swap places with this guy? A bit like William Tell shooting the apple off his son's head. He must be very, very trusting. But what's this all about? We were representing a tournament as it would have been. And the tournament wasn't just jousting, it was training for soldiers as well. The soldiers were trained to spear rings that a, uh, that a retainer would be holding up. They were also trained to chop cabbages off of sticks, which you might think, well, why do you want to chop a cabbage off a of stick? What's the point in that? The idea is that a knight is trained to win the battle, but after the battle's been won, you've got a defeated enemy army running away. So the idea is you've got chaps on foot running away from you, you've got your sword in your hand, you're riding after them and whack, back of the head. That's what the training is for with the, with the cabbages on the sticks. They're known as Turk's Head, Turk's Heads, and that's from the Crusades. the other bits with the bags on the side what were they when they were pushing them well that was that was that instrument was known as the quintain and the idea of that was for young inexperienced knights to be taught to charge fast and hard because if they went slowly and only tapped the shield the bag would come around and hit them so the idea is you go really fast and hard and you whack that shield and by the time you've whacked it and it's spun around you've gone What we're doing here today is, is trying to demonstrate what a tournament or a tournay would have been like 660 years ago in the year 1342. Uh, we have copies of armour here. The armour, though it is modern, it is exact copy of armour from 660 years ago. So it weighs the same amount. 
It is quite difficult and hard to wear and it's very difficult to manoeuvre around in. The weapons, the swords, the lances are exact reproductions of originals from the Tower of London. Is it all real? It is all real. It's not choreographed. The knights are genuinely trying to beat each other. As we heard earlier, they score one point if they hit the shield, two points if they hit the body, and three points if they can hit the enemy's lance. So what does it take to be a jouster then? It is very difficult. You've got to be brave, you've got to be a good horseman, and you've got to put a lot of time into it. So why do you think jousting is such a crowd pleaser? Well, I think it's my excellent commentary, actually. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe it, it's, a, it's a genuine interest in history, genuine interest in the pageantry and the bright colours, and also just seeing the horses and the knights. I think people love it. Alongside the entertainment arena in West Glebe Park was the Connect FM stage, playing host to some rather less dangerous activities. Gina caught up with Connect's Barry Clayson to find out about their involvement in the day. Well, we're down here with the main arena, as they're calling it, but we're actually standing on it. It's a raised stage. We've got a lot of dancing groups on from around the area, uh, Highland dancing, Irish dancing, and all that sort of thing. And they've been on throughout the day, and we're continuing on until 5 o'clock this evening. It's been a great day down here. Now the weather's turned out fine. It really is. We've got a lot of people here. So how important do you think the Corby Pole Fair is to the community? Well, I didn't come to the last one um, and I'd really got nothing to gauge it on, but judging by what's going on here, the, the, the feeling around the place is so good. There's so much good feeling with everybody there. Everybody's enjoying themselves, no problems, and everybody's getting involved, which is great. Are you pleased with the amount of people that have turned up today? It's fantastic. Um, considering they've all come down here and the weather's been a little bit dodgy earlier on, it's been busy all day and it's fantastic down here now. And I know there's a lot of people up in the top, up in Corby, in the old village, but they seem to be filtering down here now to see us, which is great. So did you get up at half past five this morning then? No. Um, <laughs> no, we, we started about eight o'clock. I was one of the lazy ones, but I know that there was uh, quite a few people out that early in the morning. So what have Connect FM got coming up over the next few summer months? Well, on the 7th of July, or the 6th and 7th of July in Wellingborough, we've got a fantastic event. We've got the Carnival on the 6th on the Saturday, and then on the same field with a big concert stage, we've got the um, Party in the Park, which is on the 7th of July. Fantastic event. Come over and see us. this time of day the crowds are still flooding through the gates but the one thing no committee can plan for is the English weather after months of planning at 7 a.m. this morning standing in the pouring rain pole fair organizer Terry Headland was feeling despondent so now the day is cheered up what does he think of the turnout uh, terrific <laughs> really good really good it's been a hell of a day I say as you say it was damp it was wet it was miserable my feet were aching and wet they're still wet, they're still aching, but I mean, you see for yourself, the crowds that we've got here are absolutely amazing. And if every one of those has paid the pound or the 50p, we've made a lot of money today, which is absolutely fantastic, really good. It is all for charity, 
every penny of it that is collected once the bills are paid will be going to charity nobody else gets any of this money so it'll be all local charities that will, will end up on the day with the money which is absolutely fantastic it's not just me <laughs> obviously it's all the helpers on the day that turned up and the, and the people who come along as well they make it as well the bands the caterers the security have been terrific everybody who volunteered they stood on the gates they spent hours collecting money stamping people's hands selling programs I mean, it's just been terrific. What more can you say? You've still got several more hours to go, of course. Well, we've got a couple of hours before we cut off with the road closures. It could be a little later on the road closures because by the time we get the big band that's on the roundabout, once they get finished, it could be more of a 7 o'clock. But I think the Rockingham Speedway uh, park and ride was pretty well done as well. There was a lot of cars up there, and that Lloyd's Road gate was constant. We were struggling at times with people out there. It really was very, very busy. So have you got any idea, can you guesstimate kind of numbers this afternoon? You're talking between 40 and 50,000. Easy, easy. Perhaps more. But people are coming in and going out, coming back, they're going to the West Glebe, coming back again. So, you know, if we took a pound every time they came back, even better, but you can't do that. But you're talking the majority of the people in Corby that live in here, in Corby and the surrounding area. I would be surprised that there wasn't that many people who didn't bother coming down today. And we have a... I don't know, about 65,000 people in the town. Obviously there will be a few that couldn't get down here for whatever reason, but, but yeah, I'm looking at 50,000, easy. So an enormous success for the organisers, despite early problems with the weather. And rain or shine, one of the major attractions today has been attempting to climb the greasy pole. So let's take a look at some of the efforts we witnessed. That's all for now, but join us after the break when we'll have more fun and action from Corby Pole Fair 2002.